Meanwhile, thousands of homes are without power as well right now. ComEd says the storm knocked out power to more than 400,000 customers at the peak of the storm. Base camps are being set up with additional resources in some of the hardest hit areas, including Joliet, Streeter, University Park, and Freeport. More than 3,000 utility workers are working around the clock to restore power, prioritizing police and fire stations, nursing homes, and hospitals. We are putting every available resource and team member into this response. We have called in mutual assistance from all neighboring utility partners across the nation, including Canada. Power has already been restored for about 200,000 homes. ComEd says about 80% of customers can expect their power to be restored by late tomorrow. The remaining outages could be restored by Friday night. The village of Shorewood in Will County was hit very hard by the storms last night. Take a look here at tree branches and debris littering yards, some of it even up on the roof. Several homes were damaged in this neighborhood and we're told there were a few injuries as well. Neighbors we talked to today say that storm sounded like a freight train coming through, pulling several large trees right out of the ground. To the east in Cedar Lake, Indiana, this neighborhood was also hit hard. This warehouse lost its roof. We saw workers making repairs already today. And in a neighborhood, a woman was killed when this tree fell on her house. We will have much more on that story coming up at 4.30 this afternoon, but we want to take a look at the large survey that's being done for all the damage. The National Weather Service already confirmed at least five tornadoes from last night, and they're still out in the area. NBC5's Christian Farr has more on the cleanup from Northwest Suburban Schiller Park. Cleanup has begun after severe storms once again passed through the Chicago area last night. This is the first time I'm seeing everything. It's just, it's, it's really bad. I, I, I didn't get any sleep last night. Um, I, there was no, there's still no power. Andrew Ayala and his family rushed to the basement of their Schiller Park apartment building when they heard warnings about tornadoes possibly touching down. It's from the windows, you can see the, the wind. Everything was hitting it, and it was just a crazy night. The National Weather Service sent out survey teams today to see how many tornadoes might have touched down last night in the Chicago area. A team in Shanahan has already confirmed that an EF1 tornado touched down near the far southwest suburban village. Back in the northwest suburbs. As the wind progressed, it was pretty, pretty big winds. I, don't, I saw people things saying like, you know, 65 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. Northwest suburban resident Philip Richardson and his family spent part of the day clearing their front yard of several fallen branches. The Texas native grew up with his fair share of tornado warnings. Richardson says he is happy that his family was not injured, and he is also glad that his home was not damaged. It's all over the, the Metroplex in Dallas, so uh, it's a little interesting to have it uh, still impact us all the way up here, but, you know, weather's changing, so. Feeling lucky? I do. Feel really lucky, feel grateful. The National Weather Service says that it's sending teams to check out 30 different areas in the Chicago area to see if tornadoes did touch down. It was pretty scary for the most part. Yeah, I'm just glad everyone's okay. In the northwest suburbs, Christian Farr, NBC5 News. Now NBC5 responds, Tuesday night's high wind and rain really creates the perfect storm for scammers. The Better Business Bureau and law enforcement are warning people to be extra cautious when dealing with any storm damage repairs today. NBC5 responds, PJ Rendawa shares how you can avoid storm chasing scammers and substandard contractors who try to take advantage of vulnerable homeowners. PJ? That's right. If your home was damaged by yesterday's storm, you probably feel some urgency to get repairs done. But that urgency opens the door for scammers to swoop in with offers of fast, low cost repairs. Unfortunately, these home repair scammers may take your money and run or perform shoddy work that damages your home even more. According to the Better Business Bureau, home repair scams ranked in the top five local scams reported last year. Steve Burness with the BBB says contractors around the area may be pretty booked up today. So if someone knocks on your door offering a fast, cheap fix, it could sound pretty tempting. So these scammers go into these areas knowing that. So they said, hey, we can take care of it today. We can cut these trees down. We can put a new roof on or or remove these debris, whatever it may be, and they're just actually storm chasers. 
individuals coming in from different towns that take advantage of consumers. Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart says the number of complaints his department has received about home repair scams have almost doubled every year since COVID. It's hard to catch the scammers, he says, because many homeowners never report them, even if they've been ripped off. Having done this for many, many years, uh, for every one we know of, there's probably 10 other ones we don't know of where either he didn't get any money or more likely it was a small amount of money and the person who was victimized just uh, is embarrassed. They don't want to go any further with it. Here are a few, a few key takeaways. Be wary of anyone who knocks on your door offering repair services after a storm and pressures you to pay them for immediate repairs. Before hiring any contractor, Google the company and their address to make sure the address is actually a real location and local. Never give any contractor cash and make sure you have a contract before agreeing to any work. PJ Randawa, NBC5 responds. Thanks so much, PJ. Sadly, last night's storms also turned deadly in northwest Indiana. One woman lost her life in Cedar Lake. An official say a tree fell on her home. NBC5's Courtney Sisk is sharing how first responders tried to save her life. It was a devastating day in Cedar Lake, Indiana, after those storms ripped through last night and fell on top of a woman's home, taking her life. Law enforcement officials say they did everything they could to try and save her. Today we, we actually uh, mourn the loss of a community member from a tragic incident. That incident happened here off Lowerman Street in West 141st Lane in Cedar Lake. High winds broke this 70-foot limb off a massive tree, sending it on top of a car and into a home. It was really quick. It was, it was bad, though. Josh Myers lives across the street and was outside when it happened. I just seen the tree fall and it hit the house and the wind blew the tree over and then I just seen a bunch of police and ambulances come. When police and fire officials arrived, they found 44-year-old Laura Nagel pinned under the tree in her room. At that point in time, it was a chaotic scene. The fire personnel and police officers frantically tried to do what we could, uh, but at that point in time, um, the the scene was not safe enough to continue. The relentless winds were still persisting during their efforts. At that time, we were uh, experiencing an extreme storm that was coming through northwest Indiana with uh, very high winds, um, heard as much as 80 miles an hour um, in some areas. Unfortunately, Nagel did not survive her injuries. Two other people were inside of the home when it happened, but they were not physically hurt. Our condolences to the family and to her loved ones. Um, this is a very tragic incident in Cedar Lake. Hopefully the community maybe can come together and help these people too, you know. Reporting in Cedar Lake, Courtney Sisk, NBC5 News. Right now, a stretch of Interstate 55 in the southwest suburbs is still shut down in both directions. That's because of downed power lines on vehicles. This happened just south of Joliet near Shanahan, and it's having a big impact on the traffic tonight, especially for drivers trying to get around. Let's get to NBC5's Everard Caspi live there near the scene. Everard, any updates on the situation? Well, Stefan, what I can tell you right now is that this portion of I-55 is expected to be closed until at least tomorrow evening. And I want to show you why. Take a look at your screen here. This is video from our drone that shows you uh, exactly the scene and what we're dealing with out here. And if you look closely enough, you can see a semi on top of another semi, the majority of a roof of a building ripped off next to the expressway. But the main reason that the expressway is closed in both directions is because of all of the down power lines strewn across it and the nearby frontage roads. You can even see a few vehicles and even a semi truck tangled up in those power lines. Again, I-55 closed in both directions here in Will County in between River Road and US-6. And right now, ComEd is working to de-energize, remove, and repair those down power lines before any part of this expressway can be reopened. I did get a chance to speak to one businessman whose semi truck is not accessible and his driver couldn't make a delivery, so he's losing money by the day. I have a load that's due to a customer that's uh, very assertive about getting their merchandise. Um, but we told him, like, hey, we can't access, the, my, my dri the driver can't access his truck to be able to get you the load. So it's pretty much one of those situations where I'm, I'm, I'm kind of desperate at this situation because I'm owner operator. So for every day my truck sits, not only am I going to lose money, the customer's going to charge me for probably a load that sits in there. 
And he told me because of this, he's losing about $1,000 per day. And he's hoping that his truck won't have to sit there past today, but that's still unclear. So here's the thing. If you normally drive through this area on I-55, you can expect delays. You should allow for extra time in order to be able to reroute. And I mentioned earlier those vehicles that were sort of trapped in between some of those power lines. An Illinois State Trooper here told me that those drivers, when those lines came down, had to sit in their vehicles until first responders came and were able to rescue them and thankfully no one died and no one was hurt remarkably again we just want to point out that this portion of i-55 is going to be closed until at least tomorrow we'll keep you updated once we get new information for now reporting live near shanahan in in will county everod casimi nbc5 news it is remarkable that nobody was killed or hurt seriously thanks so much everod for the update on that story talked a lot about the suburbs but the city also a mess from these storms NBC5's Natalie Martinez is checking out all the damage live in the West Loop tonight. Natalie. Yeah, Stefan, we are in the West Loop, and we've been covering storms and tornadoes for so many years, but I can't remember the last time we brought you damage like this happening in the city due to a tornado, which we know it is now. Let me give you some perspective here. I'm 5'8", uh, roughly 5'9". This tree, the roots of this tree now dwarf me, as you can see here. Now we know, Kevin Jeans has told us uh, through the National Weather Service that what came through here was an EF1 tornado. A wildly windy Monday night in Chicago's Gage Park neighborhood as storms rip up bushes and branches and topple trees. Home surveillance video showing the howling wind blowing a garbage bin, sending it somersaulting down an alley. About six miles south, we found Marcos among the neighbors cleaning up Tuesday night after storms tore through the West Loop. I've heard sirens, but I've never been experiencing anything like this. We were just sheltering in place with the kids. Um, started, the wind started getting very aggressive. I started hearing like uh, kind of like the sound of a baseball bat breaking. When we came out, we just saw the aftermath. This street outside Whitney Young High School, impassable. We have a 150 year old tree that kind of fell in our backyard. And so it's kind of crossing like four property lines. Power lines are down in the back, so uh, we don't really want to do anything with the tree because until they fix it. A couple blocks away at Skinner Park, we found kids climbing a massive, newly fallen tree. It crushed an iron fence, seemingly crumpled like Play-Doh. Given how much damage there is, we're all very lucky that it fell on fences and not houses. Seems pretty intense. <laughs> Tornadoes being in Chicago. I'd never believe it was possible. We found Therese documenting the damage outside the nearby Chicago Police Academy. That's history right here. That's never happened before. In the southwest suburbs, Plainfield South High School saw moderate roof and interior water damage during Monday night storm. A spokesperson says this includes damage to the roof over the southwest side of the school, hallways, and 12 classrooms. And they say they are working on fixing that. Meanwhile, here, ComEd outages. They are reporting at this hour about 102,000 customers still without power. The good news is that, of course, they're working uh, through the night and through tomorrow and through Friday to get people with their power back on. And the good news, again, is that it's about 76% restored. The bad news is it may take them until Friday for the last of the customers to get that power back on. In the meantime, we'll have to be patient and things like this are not getting cleaned up just yet because there is so much to clean up. Power though first. Stefan, for now, we're live in the West Loop. Natalie Martinez, NBC5 News. Amazing to see that perspective there, the size of that tree, Natalie. Incredible, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.